Good morning. I'm Denise Dryden here talking to you today about solar flares because I think something really big is going on and I want to sort of walk through it, translate them, help you understand what's going on so that we can um, navigate them a little bit better. So uh, welcome back to this video. I've been doing these for, oh man, six years now, six, six and a half years. And um, if you like them, please subscribe so that you can get the notifications of when I'm doing live on Sundays. And then I'm also doing videos with Ashley on Gen Xers and energy and kids and new energy kids. So um, solar flares. Okay, so a solar flare, they're, they've been getting much stronger since December. I don't know if you've noticed that. To me, it felt like sort of we hit mid-December. I'm going to say it's the solstice, right? And it's just started amping up. And it had been sort of, they've been growing since then. So um, I have a video back in the fall on solar flares. So if you would like some more information on that, you can go back and look at that. And I also have some resources down here at the bottom of the um of the video as well as ways to contact me. Okay. So I've also learned a lot more about solar flares than I thought that, um, than I originally had when I did that, because I know that a CME is a coronal mass ejection. It's when the soul, the sun puts out a flare, right? And that there are ways of measuring that through systems of A, B, um, C, M, and X. And I was confusing those two originally because I was still learning. Um, which is the grading system for how we do solar flares. And then they grade them in a scale of one through 10, sort of KP one through 10, which is the index of intensity. Okay, got my, my little index over here. Um, a solar storm is when there's a disturbance in the energy around planet Earth from a solar flare. And solar winds are when there are particulates in the air in, in the winds that come with it that create um, unpredictable storms here on Earth. And a geomagnetic storm is when all of those particulates and all of that energy affects the magnetism, the magnosphere of Earth, and it disrupts our fields. So these solar flares that are happening more often um, uh, happening, um, uh, more intense. They're, 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 they're lasting longer. They're happening more frequently and they're more intense, um, are shifting from a C class, which was the normal low C class was what we've been, we've been experiencing for the last couple hundred years to high C class, low to middle to high M class, right? <laughs> and it's starting <laughs> and we've been feeling those since December. And then now we're in this, um, we've had an X class. So when I look at my notes, um, and the reason I talked about this is I was flat, flat out last night. I don't know if you could feel it, but there was something really big started at, um, oh, let's see, started at 8.44 PM last night. It was a long duration C9, um, 8.44 Montana uh, mountain time. In the morning, there was a C8 at 9.54. The day before was an M1 at um, 5.52 p.m. On January 5th, we had the most powerful X class that I remember in record that I've been documenting, which was at 5.57 p.m. was an X1. And it just sort of hit and um, had a whole lot of effects, right? today. Already, we had one M1 at 2:50 a.m. this morning, and a second, which is um, and a second one this morning at 8:08. .08. So, in the last six hours, we've had two M class uh, flares, which means that your sleep could be interrupted, that your dreams could be really intense, that your body may hurt while you're sleeping. There's a lot of things, and we're going to go through that. So, what these solar flares are are they're vibrational energies. And what they do is they affect our frequencies and they interact with our fields and our bodies. And when they do that, it causes some chaos in our system. And that makes sense to me. It means that we're like, what's happening? Okay. So it affects our 3D bodies. Um, it's teaching us how to integrate our energy system. So yeah, there's this physical 
um, events going on from the outside in. And what I'm going to say is that they're taking our earth, they're taking our um, atmosphere, and they're taking all sentient be beings that live and breathe and grow on earth into a different level. It's sort of like when you take a a car in to have it upgraded, you know, like I need the exhaust to be better. I need this fuel line to, to be, I don't know anything about cars. And why I use that example is hilarious. Anyway, it's like upgrading a car, upgrading a system on your computer. Um, what we're doing is our, our energy system has to learn how to do this kind of vibration differently. So it's going to have all of these effects on us. So some of the effects on our bodies are exhaustion. Um, uh, we're tired all the time. I noticed that in the last two days, it's easier for me to sit on the couch and watch a really easy going movie and just sort of process all of it than to try to think or do a project or anything because I'm in the process of um, writing a book on the crystals and my head won't grab that. I just need to sort of sit and just let things give myself something to watch or take a walk in nature, get outside. And we'll talk about that later too. Foggy mind, um, not able to recall information, not able to bring in details, not even able to focus. And then sometimes you're focusing and there's peripheral things going on, lights, images, things going on on the side. And you're like, what did I just see? Right. We have headaches. We have buzzing in our ears. We have sinuses. Um, uh, again, eyes might be blurry. Um, we have sore joints, we have sore bones, we have muscles that ache, especially at night. I'm noticing that I'm waking up in my hips and my shoulders and my wrists and my ankles and my neck are really, really sore. Um, uh, spinal, um, sort of like it hurts up top, then it hurts in the middle, then it hurts at the bo bottom, <laughs> low back, middle back, like the middle back right behind the heart has just been so uncomfortable in the last four days. Um, Temperature changes. Uh, I'm freezing. So I put a blanket around me and then I'm fine. And then all of a sudden I'm hot, hot, hot. And this is not menopause. I'm beyond that. This is, this is like my body doesn't know what to do. Some, sometimes I like hot drinks. Sometimes I like cold drinks. Um, experiencing things like flu, uh, flu like symptoms, sinus infections, ear infections. Um, for those of you who might still have metal on any of your fillings, you're going to have jaw pain or tooth pain and think, oh no, I've got to go see the dentist. I've got something going on with that molar. And what we're noticing is there's some residual metals left in there, or there's been some trauma to the tooth and and anything that that sort of has held trauma or 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 maybe a little out of alignment is going to start hurting. So some of us, especially the young ones, they they hardly even notice. And and we'll talk about that too. Those of us who are older who've had, you know, metal fillings when we were young, um, maybe overused our body as athletes, um, you name it, or eating or 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 substances. There are things that, that our bodies are just going to start saying, we got to clean this up, right? Um, sleep. You're taking naps during the day. You're not sleeping at night. Um, I noticed that I'm usually wide awake between two and five, which used to happen about 10 years ago. And now it's back. A lot of um, agitation at night or very vivid dreams and information coming in. Um, stomach digestion, rumbling, can't eat the same foods I used to be able to eat. Um, the, uh, need a different diet. Um, don't respond well to alcohol. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on my list that I put down here. Oh, breathing. Sometimes it's really hard to breathe. Like you're short of breath or you're having heart palpitations. Um, I've had a couple of nights where I've, you know, had my heart just going really fast and I've had to do a yes and no check-in and go, you know, am I having a heart attack? And it's like, no, is this an energetic symptom? Yes. Is it related to solar flares? Yes. And so I go, okay, okay. So emotionally, this is also because our field is also emotions. So it's going to have another effect on us as well, which is, you know, sometimes we're just really soft and pliable. Like I don't, I, I just give up and I, and I'm just present to what is, and I'm moving. Other times we're triggered and we might experience anxiety. We might experience anger. 
We might even experience hostility, like, I don't know what's going on. We can, um, we can feel altered and in a dreamy state and half in a vision state and half in the world and watching people talk and going, you know, it's almost like you're high and you're like, this is so interesting. Uh, I, I, I'm not on anything and the world is just moving in a very altered way. Um, dark night of the soul. It's not unusual for you to have this deep dive into this reoccurring pattern or reoccurring issue or have it up really big right now because it's saying, let's deal with this. Let's deal with this and get it over with so we can move on. We have upgrading to do. So individual responses um, are key because I'm going to have a different experience than my friends are, than my children are. Um, my field is unique. So my awareness and my ability to work with that is going to be my own path and my own journey. So if you're in a partnership, your um, partner may be totally chill and loving the ride and, and, and being in watching rom-coms and sort of taking care of him or herself. Right. And you may be agitated, restless, um, pacing, um, want to pick fights. And you're kind of like this, this is not usually me what's going on or vice versa. Right. Um, this is where we have to connect into ourselves. Um, the young ones, the, the 15 and unders, um, they have a completely different energy field than we do. So what's happening is, is I have this client um, who has a little five-year-old who whenever one of these flares hit, he just sort of stands and he's as happy and easygoing as can be because that's the energy that he's looking forward to being here more often. Those of us who are older are just like crunched and we feel the pressure of it. And so these solar flares are asking us to sort of lighten our load. Um, and those of us who are HSP, um, highly sensitive, highly energetically reactive, empathic, you know, we're going to have our own versions of this and we're going to have some insights as to what's going on. So um, what if these flares are activating something in us. So it's about time. It's time. It's about timing to address where we're in misalignment, where we're holding on to conditionings, um, where we have self-awareness, where we don't. Right. And so um, I have a list. Where did I put my list? Here it is. Um, I have a list of tools, tips for you. I've got six of them. Okay. So first one, when we're experiencing something coming from the outside that's invisible, that's agitating or affecting us, we can, number one, surrender. Absolutely surrender. You've been experiencing things and sensations in your body, in your field, and around you. And, you know, I live in Montana. I live, and I've lived in the Sierra Mountains um, in Truckee, California, where when it starts to snow, it snows. So what you do is you get a little, you get prepared if you can, right? And then you just hunker down and you wait it out and you find things to do. You play cards inside, you take naps, you, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. So you just surrender. So these physical storms are not different than these energetic storms. So you surrender, something's going on. I don't know what it is. I have to start partnering and playing with it and figuring that out. Number two is to acknowledge that it's energetic, it's invisible, that it is impacting you and that there are symptoms coming in or symptoms in the people around you or symptoms in nature and notice what's going on. So you acknowledge, oh, and then you go, wait, wait, maybe I better check on um, spaceweather.com, get on Facebook and check it. And, and, and I've got a list for you at, with Pam and go, is there one going on right now? And nine times out of 10, there's a flare going on right now in front of you when you're noticing this agitation. Number three, listen to your body. What is talking to you? Is it your bones? Is, is it your joints? Is it your digestion? Is it your head? Is it your vision, your balance, your energy, your endurance? And then what do you do when you feel something unusual, right? Do you fight it? No, it's not happening. Or do you get afraid like, oh my God, what if I have cancer? What if I'm dying? Or do you partner with it? and calm and play with it. Like, wow, this was a big one. Kind of like if, if you've ever delivered a baby, <laughs> kind of like the contraction. It's like, the, here it comes. I have to ride this one out. Number four, adjust and adapt. 
adjust your sleep, your schedule, your foods, your activities, your thinking, your energy, because all of these things are just needing to be tweaked a little bit. So the more rigid we are, or the more stuck we are in a very rigid schedule, the harder it is for us to adapt to this and still maintain the structure that we had in place. Number five, um, within the elements, physically, hydrate, eat lighter foods, um, take walks, take magnesium, rest, sleep, do supplements that help, you know, address the physical things. I've noticed that all of my big, heavy winter foods that I love to make, my stews, my soups, um, they ooh, can't, I can't do that. I'm eating a lot of fruit and a lot of salads because it's lighter in my digestion, um, needs to be moving more fluidly, cannot sit there and, and work on big food. Emotionally is that ungrip, relax, um, ride it, you know, notice when you're up, when you're down, what you're feeling. Mentally, this is so crucial to relax your thoughts, right? Bring your thoughts down and look at where you're getting agitated, where you're getting anxious, um, to be able to sit calmly, to, um, to do use breath, to use meditation, to soften, to expand your awareness beyond your thinking, like, what am I really feeling? What's going on around me? And use your mind as a collection device, not as something that needs to grip and, and, and steer it. Um, spiritually is to trust, to learning something new, whether it's self-love, acceptance, adaptability, surrender, that this is a big upgrade and these alignments are going to keep happening on earth and around us. And number six, have compassion. Have compassion for yourself. Have compassion for the people around you because we're in a really tough place. We have to, we have to, um, it's sort of like, you know, it, it, one of the old rides and one of the, the things we talked about is like Mr. Toad's wild ride. You get on something and you think it's just a little kid's ride and it bumps you up and down all over the place. And you're like, oh no, but you can't really fight it. All you can do is have compassion for the journey. So underneath there's some resources for, um, how you can look this up, spaceweather.com. And what I've learned is that I'm still on Facebook and I'm on Facebook primarily because of Pam Youngins. She's an astrologer. She's a very rational fact gathering woman who also understands sort of um, uh, the ascension, the awakening, the enlightenment that's happening. So her articles um, or her postings are going to be very, very good at telling us when there's a solar flare, what the class is, what's going on. And she then pulls in resources from people all over. She mentions Cece. She mentions um, a girl, what's it called? A girl in the universe, you know, who are writing very good pieces about what to do with these solar flares. The other thing you can do is look at the Schumann resonance, um, because that will also tie in with space weather. Um, I put solar information on my um, my monthly newsletter, so you can also sign up for that if you if you click into my website and go to, from there. You can always find me on denisedryden.com and have a fabulous Sunday. Take care of yourself. I think we have bigger classes ahead of us, or bigger class solar flares ahead of us. So take care of yourself. See you next week. Bye bye.